Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. A few weeks ago, I made a video about this, the BMAX B1 Plus. This is now one of several mini PCs that sells for $100 or less, and which is therefore a potential alternative to an SBC like a Raspberry Pi. However, Unlike a Raspberry Pi, this does not have GPIO or general purpose input output connectivity for interfacing with electronic components such as sensors or motor controllers. However, it is possible to add GPIO to any standard x86 PC or laptop. And so in this video, we're going to equip this computer with GPIO. When adding GPIO to a standard PC like this, there are two basic options available. The first is what we could call indirect and involves connecting a microcontroller, such as this Raspberry Pi Pico, to the PC using USB. And we can then connect sensors and other electronics to the Pico to its GPIO pins, and we can access them on the PC using a terminal or an Integrated Development Environment, or IDE. So for example, in my Raspberry Pi Pico weather station video, we initially had a BME280 sensor connected to some GPIO pins on a Raspberry Pi Pico, which we accessed over a USB connection in the Sony IDE. And using Sony, we ran a Python program on the Pico that brought up temperature, humidity, and pressure readings on the PC's monitor. Similarly, in my first PicoMite video, we initially controlled some LEDs by communicating over USB with a Raspberry Pi Pico using the PuTTY terminal emulator. However, in both of these examples, all of the code ran in directly on the microcontroller with the PC not having direct access to the GPIO pins. And so, in this video, we're going to focus on the second way to add GPIO to any PC, and this is to use a USB breakout board like this to give the PC direct GPIO control. Several different breakout boards are available for this purpose, and include Adafruit's MCP2221A and FT232H. These are widely available, and not just from Adafruit itself, and I'll provide various links in the video description. As we can see here, on Adafruit, the two boards currently sell for $6.50 and for $14.95, with the MCP2221A offering four general purpose digital input output pins, I2C, three possible analog to digital converter inputs, and one digital to analog converter output. Meanwhile, the FT232H offers 12 general purpose digital inputs or outputs and has I2C and SBI interfaces, although these cannot be used at the same time. And here we're going to be using the FT232H, but which one you choose depends on your connectivity requirements. If we take a closer look at the FT232H, we can see that it's really tiny, at just 38 by 23 by 4 millimeters, or about 1.5 by 0.9 by 0.2 inches. The board is named after the FT232HIC from FDTI chip on which it is based, and at one end has a USB Type C port to connect it to a PC. And do note you have to supply your own cable. The board's GPIO pads are then down each edge as we can see, and if we flick the board over like that, we can see that underneath, even though this is a very small PCB, everything is very well labelled. And if we flick things back the other way again, the board's getting very excited being moved around like this all the time, we can see that on the top there is a small switch here, and this is an i c mode switch that I'll discuss later in the video. And next to it, on the end of the board, there's a 4-pin Adafruit Stemmer QT or QT connector that allows many different kinds of sensor to be plugged in with no soldering required. This said, in this video, we're going to connect to the GPIO connectors using a breadboard, and to allow this to happen, the FT232H is supplied with these headers. So, 
I'm now going to cut these down to an appropriate length and solder them into position. Here we go. Samantha the soldering iron has leapt into action. And with the headers in place, we can move on to software installation. Right, with our FT232H now waiting in a breadboard, but not yet connected to the BMAX PC, we need to set things up. And for this, Adafruit provide excellent documentation. As we can see here, it is available for Windows. We can see down there. And it's also available for Mac and for Linux, which is what we're going to use here. And I'll provide links in the video description. The process varies a little depending on the operating system, but basically involves installing a USB device driver and in Linux setting UDEV rules, installing the Python FTDI library and in Windows also Pi USB, installing Adafruit's Blinker Circuit Python library compatibility layer, which allows us to use Circuit Python libraries normally run on microcontrollers in standard Python on a standard PC setting the blinker environment variable, and then Adafruit suggests running some checks, always a good idea to see if everything is working okay. And then finally, we can do some cool GPIO stuff. Note that for everything to work, Python 3 must be installed on your computer. And here we're running Linux Mint where it should be pre-installed. And we can check that by opening up a terminal and just typing Python 3 like that, and hopefully, yes, we can see Python 3 is clearly on our machine. And we can exit from it by typing exit like that, and we're back to the standard terminal prompt. And if Python 3 isn't installed on your system, do not worry, you can just go to the download page for Python 3 and download it for Windows or Linux or Mac. Also note that you have to have the Python pip installer on your system, which normally isn't here by default in a Linux, I don't think. And so here, as this is a fresh install, we'll type a sudo and an apt install and a Python 3 pip like that. And now Linux wants me to confirm this with my password. And yes, it's now installing pip for us on this system. So we can now run through the setup process detailed here in our bullet list. And I'm going to keep open this page of the Linux instructions from Adafruit because we're going to want to paste this text into our terminal in a second. But uh, over here by the magic of filmmaking, the terminal is nice and clear. And we've got the first instruction ready to execute, which is the one for installing libUSB. So let's do that. And we find libUSB is already the newest version, but there are some new packages, so we will take them. There we go. And next, we need to set up some rules so that the UDEV device manager here in Linux knows how to handle the FT232H. And to do this, we need to create and edit a .rules file using the nano text editor. So we'll enter the command for that like this. And here we are with our new file opened in the editor. And we'll just go back to the uh, web page and take the various information we need from here. Oh, isn't it handy we can copy code these days? There we are, it is copied. And we can just paste that in like uh, that. And if we now control X, do we want to save it? Yes, we do, and uh, enter. And there we are, that's done. And we'll now move on to install the Python driver for our FTDI hardware using the pip command we made sure was installed. There we go. And we get a path error there, but it doesn't seem to cause us any trouble later on, as far as I'm aware, so we will just move on from this. And we will now install Adafruit Blinker, the clever software that allows us to use circuit Python libraries in regular Python on a standard PC. And there we are, that's happened as well. And so finally, to make Blinker work, we need to set an environment variable by entering there we go. And so now, in theory, our PC is set up to access the FT232H GPIO breakout board. And to test this is the case, we'll now plug it in. Here we go. Very exciting. Over here, we've got our USB 3 port. Is it the right way up? It is. And oh, it's got an LED it's lit up. That's very exciting. Always good to get an LED lit up when you plug something in. 
but uh, I think we should test it a bit more than having seen the LED is lit up. So we'll launch Python like that. And then Adafruit give us a couple of commands to enter so we can check the device is working. So we'll do that. And there we are. We can see our available FTDI device. Things seem to be working. And if they aren't, Adafruit's documentation is very helpful indeed. But as here things are OK, we'll just check our blinker environment variable was set correctly by going back into Python 3 like that and uh, importing OS like that and asking the system to report the environment variable. And there we are, we've got a value of 1, we haven't got any errors, so this does seem to be working. And according to Adafruit, the final check is to import board like that. And in theory, if we run this command and we don't get any errors, everything is ready. So let's have a go. There we are, no errors, which means our setup is now complete. Greetings. For a test, I've now wired up two LEDs, and these are connected to GP pins C0 and D7 on the FT232H breakout, and then to the ground rail via a 470 ohm current limiting resistor. Over in Linux, I've closed everything down, as for me, it's now the next day, so let's launch a new terminal, where initially we're going to set the blinker environment variable, as it doesn't seem to persist, and I've got it in the buffer there like that, so let's execute that. And then we'll launch Python, where we're going to import board like that, and we'll also import digital I.O. like that. Next, let's set up pin C0 to control one of our LEDs. And I hope I've got the command for that somewhere in the buffer. There it is, so we'll execute that. And we also have to set a direction, which we do like this. There we are, that command tells that pin to be an output. And with that in place, we can type led.value and equal true. And wait for it. Yes, the LED has come on. Isn't that exciting? And guess what? We could turn it off again. We could go back to our command and make that, I'm sure you would guess, false like that. Yes, the LED has now gone off. We've got GPIO control. But what about the second LED? What about this one? Well, I've written a small piece of code, so let's just come out of Python like that. And if we just change to a Python code, which is where I've got my Python code stored, there it is, as you can see. So if I type Python 3 LED table, finish things off, and Yes, there we are. We've got two blinking LEDs. Very, very exciting indeed. And if you're wondering how I've done that, you probably guess, but I'll show you anyway. Let's do a control C to stop the code like that. And if I type nano LED tab to complete and go like that, we can see the code here in the nano editor, which basically imports board, imports digital IO, and imports the time library as well sets up our two LEDs as LED AA and BB on pins C0 and D7. And then it has a little loop, which basically turns one on, one off, waits for half a second, reverses things, waits for half a second, and continues until the end of time. So that's how it's done. Let's press Control X to get out of this. And because it's so exciting, let's run the code again. There we are, and yes. We're once again using our BMAX mini PC to blink two LEDs. Right, I've now connected a BME280 temperature, pressure, and humidity module. Let's give you a better shot of that, like this. And we're going to communicate with this module using the inter integrated circuit or I squared C interface. And because of this, I've set the I2C mode switch to on. And this switch exists because we cannot use the board's I2C and SPI, or serial peripheral interface, at the same time. So we need to select which one to use. Back in Linux, we've now got this bit of code, which loads in appropriate libraries, including 
Adafruit Circuit Python library for the BME280 sensor. And I installed this earlier in a terminal using the command pip3 install Adafruit Circuit Python BME280. Back with the code once the drivers are loaded, we then set up the sensor and then we read it in an infinite loop which prints out values every five seconds. So let's close this down and run the code. There we are. And hopefully, yes, we have some temperature, humidity and pressure readings. And if we wait a second, we'll have another set of temperature, pressure and humidity readings. And for full disclosure, I should note that here I'm using a Pimeroni rather than an Adafruit BME280 sensor. And this matters because the Adafruit Circuit Python library that we're using expects the board to be on address 0x77, but my Pimeroni sensor is on address 0x76. So I've edited the relevant Adafruit file in three places to change the address to that of my board. And as we can see, everything is still working here in the terminal. So let's uh, stop this with Control C because I want to show you a second piece of code. Hopefully I've got that ready to load in. I have like that. Here it is. And what this does is to store the values in a spreadsheet. So we're using a couple more libraries. We're importing date time so we can time and date stamp our readings. And we're also using the library OpenPyXL, which allows us to work with a spreadsheet in Python. And I installed this earlier in a terminal using the command pip3 install openpyxl. Back here in the code, we set up our sensor as before, but we also load in our spreadsheet. We load the workbook weather.xlsx, and we also set the sheet to be the first one in that workbook. And then we've got our infinite loop as before. It's still printing out values, but after that, it's going to append the readings to a spreadsheet by defining row, by appending the row to the spreadsheet and saving things. And then it's going to repeat this every three seconds. So let's come out of this, Control X, and run this piece of code. Hopefully I've got the command waiting in the terminal. And yes, it's running. Sorry, I was being a bit surprised how it worked. I shouldn't be surprised when things work. Anyway, as we can see, we see our readings as previously. It says they're being saved in a spreadsheet. In the real world, we wouldn't do this every three seconds. We'd probably do it every 15 minutes or every half an hour or every hour, but that would take a long time in the video. So this has given us some data to work with. So let's uh, stop this with Control C. And now the moment of truth is we go to LibreOffice Calc and load in our spreadsheet. Very exciting. Let's go down to that and recent documents. There it is. And hopefully, yes, there are our readings. And I'm sure some people are saying they aren't very well formatted, Chris. They aren't. That could be sorted out. If you want to see this sorted out better, look to my previous Raspberry Pi weather station video, where I went through this technique in more detail. But for now, we're going to leave this here because we've clearly proved the principle of using a GPIO breakout board to read a sensor and store values on a standard PC. Adding GPIO to a desktop PC or laptop opens up all kinds of possibilities. However, do be careful to wire things up correctly and to check your wiring accurately before you turn things on because you don't want to damage a USB port on your computer. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and I hope to talk to you again very soon.